Hello again, everyone. This is Mark Oswald with Aegis Financial alongside Bill Bowman, CPA and President of Aegis Financial, a 2021 Forbes Best in State Advisor. And Bill, the stock market continues to just move forward. It sure does. The S&P is at about 39.50 as we speak, and we predicted that would go to 4,000 by mid-year, and you can see how it's it's just going very well. Um, that's about a 5% increase this quarter for the S&P 500. The Dow's up 8% this quarter. That's over 50% growth since last year at this time. It's just amazing recovery. It really is, and you start thinking about recovery, and one of the things we saw this week were some private payroll numbers and, and people going back to work. And mm-hmm. you start to see things back, opening back up, the economy coming back online. But that jobs number that we got on Wednesday sure. was really important. Yes, 517,000 new jobs uh, just showing us that we're getting back to economic normalcy, uh, things opening back up. It's very important to continue on with the market movement. You look at the raw number, you know, the 517,000 jobs, but you look inside that number a little bit, hospitality came back. You start Mm -hmm. thinking about restaurants and hotels and bars and things like that. That, That's a sign that things are opening back up. The other thing you look at is the size of the companies that reported new jobs. A lot of the 500,000 jobs were with small employers and mid-side employers, and that's good too. Yeah, everything seems to be opening up as we had thought earlier in the year, and it's good to see that. We we uh, do believe that it will continue through the rest of the year. You start seeing job numbers and GDP numbers that are really very, very constructive. But the other thing we have to always talk about right now, at least, mm-hmm. is the vaccine and yeah. some good news there as well. Oh, yes. Uh, last week, we had noted that there's almost 2.8 million uh, were vaccinated last week. That's about mm-hmm. 148 million in the U.S. that have received a vaccination. Uh, that gets us to about 30 percent of where we are as the as a uh, as a country. So uh, those numbers look really good. Yeah, and the other thing that we saw earlier this week too was, you know, lowering that minimum age for people to get vaccinated. Kids as young as 12 now, and they're, and Pfizer's saying at least that they're 100% effective at that age group. So that's another healthy step forward. I think one of the things, Bill, that people are looking for is what does it mean for me and my portfolio? The vaccines are one thing, the jobs number is another. But when we start looking at other numbers like the 10-year U.S. bond, that's an important number because it kind of tells us a little bit about investor sentiment. You see money coming out of fixed income. Why is that? Well, I think it's because it's going to cost a little more to live. Uh, the interest rates going up is going to take more money out of our wallet. And so the only way we can re- recoup that is to be in equity positions. The bonds still just aren't there producing any type of meaningful revenue for us to gain money for our clients. Well, the fact is bonds are just more sensitive to inflation. And if Correct. we start to see things costing more at the grocery store or at the gas station, I think everybody's seen that. Mm-hmm. It simply makes the bonds, the fixed income instruments, less valuable. Yep. And you start to see money moving towards stock funds. And that continues to propel the stock market forward as well. That's right. The additional investments from stimulus money is pushing the market higher. Absolutely. So it'll be really interesting to see, and we believe as our investment committee, that the Fed is going to stand pat, that they're going to stay true to their word to not raise interest rates in the short term. And that, too, is good for stock investors. That's right. Let's look forward to some other things that we saw this week that are impacting the investment markets. And on Wednesday, again, we saw the Biden administration coming out, at least with some plan, whether it becomes law or not, but to spend as much as another $2 trillion on infrastructure spending. Yeah, it's a big amount. Again, uh, more money being uh, pumped into the economy, and uh, it'll keep spurring the market forward and growing. So we anticipate that to continue throughout the end of the year and the market continue to grow. It comes with a cost, of course, and the cost of revenue for the federal government is always taxes. Mm -hmm. So we are keeping an eye on that proposal and corporate tax rates and what that might mean as well. But I mentioned our investment committee earlier, some of the contingency planning that we're doing. Let people know a little bit about what our thoughts are for the markets for the short term and the longer term. Sure. Well, our short term strategy is still one where we're being a little bit protective for our clients who are using money. We've we've already structured those funds in a more protective stance. Our long term strategy, though, is quite a bit more aggressive in that we've added some equity positions in the last couple of weeks to our portfolios to try to take advantage of what we anticipate for the long term to make even more for our clients. Here we are, the baseball season's gonna get kicked off this week, mm-hmm. and of course it's Easter weekend, and you know that means a lot to us and our clients. Yes, we'd like to wish you and all our clients a uh, happy and blessed Easter this season.